Are you in favor of opening up a debate to cancel some of Italy's debt? We work with the treaty, and so we are following the treaty regulation. Okay, so you work with the treaties, and, and, and you know very well that the treaty says that is not uh, possible, that's not doable. So essentially what you mean is that Italy is not floating this idea. It's simply not doable. Our government is moving according to the treaty and is working with the economical stimulus in order to boost the growth, because more we are going to boost the growth, thanks also to next generation of fiscal policy based on the European Union, we are going to decrease the debt and we work always on the sustainability of the public debt. Right, so it's about growth and it's about debt sustainability. But I have to ask you just to wrap up on this issue. How unanimous is this line of thought among the Italian government? We've heard there's a number of opinions, some who actually think this is a fair debate. Uh, there are many opinions around the European Union, but we work according to the treaty. We work according to the agreement that we signed all over the European Union with the European Commission. So this is the main track where we have to work in a difficult time like we are living. Okay, so that line is clear. Italy is going to follow the treaty. And, and uh, Minister, I have to ask you about uh, next week, because this is looking very busy. When you look at the situation right now in Europe, what worries you more? Is it Viktor Orban or is it Brexit? But the, the, the Hungarian and Polish uh, veto, I think, is a huge responsibility that they are taking, of course, because they are blocking an agreement that is very important for the European economy and also for the Hungarian and Polish economy. So this is our problem on the, on the timetable that we signed. Brexit, as usual, Europe is very united. We are backing our uh, delegate, Michel Barnier. The, he has our full trust, confidence to negotiate on the base of the European regulation. And Minister Amendola, I'm sure you've, you've been watching and or listening to Viktor Orban this morning where he says that he doesn't really see a compromise at this stage. Is he going to double down on this? And if he does, do you see a plan B where you just put Poland and Hungary aside? No, there is just one plan A. Uh, the rule of law, the Article 2 of the treaty is our ID. It's the European ID all over the world. So we cannot negotiate on our ID. Okay, and, and when it comes to Brexit, there's another potential veto. Today, the French uh, Europe Minister uh, Clément Bonne, who you know very well, was saying that France has a right to veto if they believe the ultimate deal is a bad deal for the country. Are we going to get to that point? It depends on uh, how the negotiation is going on. Of course, uh, for example, the issue of Fisher is not just a French issue, it's a European one. So the Michel Barnier has a clear file with all our... Uh, requests that are based on our market union uh, regulation, so as all the instruments to to speak on behalf of the European Union, that is very united in this negotiation. Right, and how much faith do you have in, on, on Michel Barnier? He's been negotiating for this for years now. Do you have blind faith in him? He's going to come back home with a good deal? He's a wonderful negotiator, and when a negotiator has also the unanimous support of the European country, I think he can do his job like he always done in the past. Right, and, and looking forward, specifically now when it comes to Italy, there has been a lot of back and forth as to whether we could see delays to your next generation EU plan, as to whether the Commission is pushing you to provide this plan. When are we going to see it? But we are well on track, as Ursula von der Leyen said two weeks ago. We are working with the task force of the European Commission because we want to follow the agreement line, the guideline. We want to invest all together in the same rules. What, as the Italian government, next Monday we have a cabinet meeting to upload and to update the guideline that we presented to the Commission. And we want to, as soon as possible, to install with the law, of course, that we present in the Parliament, the executive body for the implementation of the plan when the money, the, the first disbursement are going to come uh, uh, next year. We want that already the task force and all the regulation is ready because we have no time to lose in right. terms and of investment. Right, and you say you have no time to lose, but let's just imagine this recovery fund is, is delayed and you are spending a lot of money to prop up your economy. If there's a delay, is that pushing you ultimately very close to the ESM? 
We are working all together with the European Commission. All the economical and fiscal policy is common at the European level. There is a good front line uh, together between Commission, European Central Bank, the European Council. So this is the European Union that is working and, of course, is giving uh, strength to all the different countries. So we are working in this direction and this is the line that we want to follow. Okay, Minister, just a very final question, very briefly. Is it a good idea to go skiing this winter? Uh, look, our position as Italian government, uh, together with other countries, is that we have to avoid, in all the way, the third wave of COVID-19. So we have to make sacrifice. We are asking sacrifice to our people. Just now that the second wave is decreasing, we don't want that during the uh, Sylvester vacation there is the possibility of it. Uh, coming back to other sacrifice. So let's do a work with a, a prudent way. Let's clear, uh, be clear with our citizens that we are going out from the tunnel. And the third way has to be excluded from the beginning.